that is the the thing I want to talk about today, uh, which is the U.S. Treasury Department stepping up size of bond sales and what does it really mean? You know, how's it going to affect the U.S. economy and so on? And uh, are the reports accurate? You know, whatever you read on the news portals, are they accurate? So that is a crucial thing that I want to discuss today. Okay, so first of all, the U.S. Treasury Department expanded its auction offerings in response to the growing burden of its debt and the uptick of financial expenses. So I'm going to underline these two particular areas, the debt and uptick of financial expenses, right? So what they're doing is that the this strategic move came after the Treasury aimed to refinance the $102 billion worth of maturing notes which expired on November 15. And generate and generate an additional nine billion. So, uh, all in all, we are talking about hundred and twelve billion auction of new debt that's going to go out in the market, right? Okay, that already went out in the market, not going to go out in the market. So, this significant financial exercise was conducted in three segments with the sale of uh, forty eight billion in three year notes. Okay, uh, this was followed by 40 billion in 10 year notes right and 24 billion in 30 year bonds so look at over here 40 billion 10 year notes 24 billion 30 year bonds in other words the long the uh longer time frame the bonds that are longer time frame we are talking about a 64 billion uh amount right over here so basically, this treasury's approach is a bit to efficient, uh, efficiently manage its debt obligations amidst escalating costs that we are seeing right now with those high interest rates, right? So before the auction, what happened was there was a growing unease in the market regarding the sufficiency of demand to absorb the treasury's increased bond issuance, right? Should the demand fall short, the outcome could be a rise in U rates, escalating further the cost of borrowing. This scenario harbors the risk of triggering broader financial instability, a concern that markets was closely monitoring. And uh, one of the reasons why I did not bring it up much earlier was that you know I pre prefer to see uh, from the point of the real data, you know whether this this uh, is there enough. Mm, enough clients to to absorb all this this new bonds that the 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 treasury department is is selling rather than speculate you know if this if this 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 is it's best to see this because this kind of news right over here uh can really change the whole facade of the u.s economy okay so this is a chart of the u.s 10-year yield uh, the 10-year bonds and the returns of the bonds, okay? So I purposely brought this up so that you can understand what actually you are looking at. Now, a quick look at the 10-year interest rates answered the question about the demand, okay? Because early on, I said, you know, we are going to worry about the demand. But looking at this chart, it really tells you whether there is demand or there's none, okay? So what we are seeing over here is yields coming down, right? The returns are coming down. Okay, yields are returned. They they made a high of five percent in early October, but right now it has dropped about fifty basis points. Uh, current price when I wrote this report, they, it was at four point four seven two percent. Right. So look over here. What I'm trying to say is that when yields come down, it means bond prices are up, right? Because yields here, think of it as a return. It is a return. Okay, so if you pay a higher price for an asset class, of course, it's going to return less to you, okay, as opposed to paying less and then you get more returns, right? So with the market flooded with bonds, right, we have seen just now to the tune, you know, hundreds of billions of, you know, like 100 billion US dollars worth of bonds is being thrown out of the market that is like, a real supply and we had oh, a lot of news portals the financial times cnbc reporting that that is a glut in bonds you know um, it's a big worry over there okay uh, bonds have been thrown out to the market and so kind of stuff so if you think about economy 101 if you have more supply what was going to happen 
bond prices should come down, right? Because it's re there's more supply right now. So more supply, that means there's a problem uh, with more supply with and uh, less demand, of course, price will come down. So if prices come down, then your yield should be increasing instead, right? So, but what we're having over here is a uh a deluge of new supply, but at the same time, we have interest rates actually coming, the yield, sorry, the yield actually coming down, right? So the only answer to this is that the demand for for this bonds is outstripping supply and supply expectations. There's no other explanation than this. That's the only way that we are seeing right now. Yes, they are throwing bonds in the market, but there is real demand and people are gobbling it up. So as price of the bonds increase, they still gobble it up. And that's how, oh, the reason why you're seeing the this uh, yields actually dropping over here. Okay. So it was reported that buys did not disappoint. So it's, it wasn't something of a surprise based on the way the yields are moving, right? So we had various news portals reporting that the auction was solid, really, really good, okay? So what, what we have over here, the portals, they gave a reason. They say that they, because that the market anticipated that Fed is going to cut rates, uh, and uh, they want to take this opportunity to load up their money, to you know, to take advantage of the the high interest rates that these bonds are paying, before the Fed cut its rates. Okay, so uh, while an uptick in demand for short term treasuries is typical in such scenarios, because it's a short term, but when I looked at the whole thing just now, remember highlighted, right. They were actually more long-term bonds being sold than short-term bonds. So the surge in demand for long-term securities like the 10-year securities that I shared with you is more telling. And this particular interest you know, that we are seeing right now suggests that investors are bracing for a potential market correction. Then what we are seeing right now, like the market is euphoric, it's been going up and up and up and everybody thinks that it's going to go up. Well, I... It's not that I like to uh, approach it in a contrarian way, but I need to be careful approaching the market because at the end of the day, uh, the market dictates where it would move, you know, what, what the asset class would move, right? So if they are telling me a big bunch of people prefer the 10-year bonds and the 30-year 10-year treasuries and 30-year bond, 30 bonds, right? Um, that tells us that you know the long-term bonds are attractive in the face of uncertainty because people are not certain then they would prefer their pack of cash in somewhere that's safe i.e the longer term bonds right so because if you look at it overall let's not even look at the 30 let's just use the 10-year treasury as a benchmark, this here reflects the long-term outlook of investors on the economy's performance, the U.S. economy performance. So if expectations were tilted towards a robust market growth, I, I would believe that investors would likely direct the capital towards equities instead because the return will definitely be much more than the bonds. But the fact that they are choosing to invest in long-term government bonds that signals a lack of confidence, unfortunately, in the sustained growth of the stock market and a suggest and suggests a cautionary cautionary stance. I really, really suggest that because I'm a bit careful looking at this thing and said why people are looking at these longer term bonds, right? So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that the current investment patterns in the treasury markets may be indicative of a broader consensus among investors that a market correction could be on the horizon. It can come uh, probably in Q1 or Q2 next year. That can come. I'm not discounting the fact, okay? So this sentiment is crucial to understanding the undercurrents of the market dynamics that we're looking at and also the collective investor psyche um, 
But right now, what we're seeing is is definitely skewed towards risk aversion. I uh, know the Fed is trying to say that don't worry, everything is fine and dandy. We're gonna have a soft landing kind of stuff like that. Um, I'm taking it with a pinch of salt. Probably we we'll need a couple like uh December's jobs data, December's inflation to have uh overall an idea what really uh, is gonna happen. But um this week's GDP, right? Uh US GDP, preliminary GDP. Uh, would give us an idea. So Wednesday, November 29th, 9.30 p.m. in Singapore time. And if you see that, you know, that is something that you need to um, uh, look at because we need to study all these data in detail. But what I'm seeing is that there's still uh, risk aversion moving around, okay? That's the general consensus of the market at the current moment. So such a... If towards treasuries, especially the high interest rate environment, underlines the challenges for economic expansion. Okay, so yeah, with money packed in long term bonds, I don't think uh, you're gonna see much expansion. So, if you have been looking at uh, reading the news, right, they are they are all writing about potential rate cut. Though the Fed has said that they don't plan any rate cuts, but the market is just not buying whatever they're saying. So I I am in the camp of a rate cut, and I believe when that rate cut happens, it's not because the U.S. market has recovered and the the Fed thinks that they can reintroduce quantitative easing, uh, but it would be a response to remediate issues emerging during that time. So that means there is a catalyst. Something's going to happen. Something's going to crack that forces the Fed to actually cut its rates, okay? So this, if we see that, it would mean that we may not have a soft landing as predicted by the Feds, okay? So guys, I need you to, uh, from now on, to be, uh, to focus on whatever data that's coming out from, from, the U.S. and, uh, you know, if you're too bullish about the U.S. stock market, I would recommend to be careful and approach the market in 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 a way that, you know, uh, take everything with a pinch of salt and be careful because the big boys, they are buying the bonds and they're buying the long-term bonds and that means something uh, could happen to the market, okay? So with that, let's move on to the chart.